minutes now, but we're going to start with that NASA launch, which we're expecting in the next few minutes. Now, let's explain what it's all about. Trapped under its icy surface, this moon of Jupiter could be a vast ocean with double the amount of water on Earth, leading some scientists to believe it could be home to life. In a few minutes, a spacecraft is expected to blast off from Florida on the hunt for those signs of life on one of Jupiter's moons. It's named Europa. These are pictures live from Cape Canaveral. Uh, we're going to be speaking to the space engineer, Dr. Adam Baker, and also in the studio, we've got our science correspondent, Palab Ghosh. Um, Adam, first of all, to you, just explain how difficult is this mission? Hello, good to be here. Well, it's one of the most difficult missions that NASA or any space agency has ever done. It's the largest interplanetary spacecraft NASA's ever launched. It's going to fly all the way to Jupiter, taking five years to get there. And then it's going to orbit it some 50 times in one of the worst radiation environments that any spacecraft's ever been designed to withstand. Well, there we go. It's a pretty tall order. Um, Palab Ghosh with me in the studio. What is it looking for? What's it going to do? It's going to be orbiting, isn't it? And looking for any potential signs of life. Well, Ben, as you said, somehow this little world so far from the sun has got water, not just water, but lots of it under its icy surface. And of course, where there's water, there may well be life. So that's the really exciting thing about this, because Europa... This tiny moon of Jupiter may well be the most likely place in our solar system to be home to life. And we'll get some results in five years' time, but it's still on its way. Yeah, five years' time, it sounds an awful long way into the future. And that, that's because it's so far away from us. It's a 1.8 billion mile journey, so it's going to take some time. It's taken the long route. It's got to do a few... Um, Fly, it's got to do a few slingshots to gain gravity from other planets, but it is going to get there in 2030. And it's going to take a real, really close up look at the, the surface, take magnetic readings to find out about the oceans. And there are plumes that come out from the surface. And if it's lucky, it'll fly through one of these plumes mm. and, and actually taste what these oceans are like. But just to be clear, it's not going to land. It's just going to orbit it and, and try to work out as much information as it can from orbiting. NASA's very clear. It's not going to land. It's not going to find life, but it's going to find out whether Europa has the potential to support life, which is a step closer to actually finding life um, in our solar system. Um, Adam Baker, back to you. Just where, well, I think we're two minutes away from launch. It's due at six minutes past the hour, so just over two minutes. What, what, just talk us, to us a bit about the design of this spacecraft and how it has been designed for this very difficult and very long term mission. Yeah, so there's a couple of features that are really important, one of which is how it produces its power, because you obviously need electrical power to run the instruments and keep it warm out there in the freezing cold depths of interplanetary space. So it has enormous solar arrays. Most spacecraft are solar powered, with a few exceptions. It, this one's not using nuclear power, perhaps unusually at that distance. And the solar arrays are enormous. So I think um, it's about the size of a complete tennis court in terms of the length, so about sort of 30, nearly 35 metres long. And it needs it in order to be able to suck in enough sunlight to produce enough power to run the instruments. It's running a radar, for example, to look beneath the icy crust and try and uh, assess the, the water, the oceans under Europa. And those are really power hungry and, and no missions ever used a radar this far from the sun. So there's a huge power challenge. The other side of the equation is actually it's orbiting in a really harsh radiation environment. Jupiter, like the Earth, traps um, energetic particles around it because of its strong magnetic field. And the spacecraft has to fly through these time and time again. In fact, it's not in orbit around Europa. It's taking multiple kind of close passes, but spending most of its time at a relatively safe distance from Jupiter. That said, it still needs to contain its sensitive electronics, the computers, the data recorders, in what they call a vault, 
made of a thick layer of aluminium alloy, which makes the whole spacecraft much heavier, especially when you consider you have to throw it from Earth to the other side of the solar system. So power and weight are two of the real key challenges the yeah. designers have to face. And it ends up weighing about nearly six tons, which is a huge yeah. spacecraft to, again, throw to the other side of the solar system. That's why they need SpaceX's well, second biggest rocket, not the biggest after the launch the other day, but second biggest rocket to get there. OK, Adam, thank you. We're just going to listen in to the launch then um, from Florida. Let's uh, look at the launch uh, to travel to Europa to study the Jupiter moon. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. And liftoff. Liftoff for Falcon Heavy with Europa Clipper unveiling the mysteries of an enormous ocean lurking beneath the icy crust of Jupiter's moon, Europa. Engine chamber pressures are nominal. You see that the chamber pressures are nominal as we hear all 27 Berlin engines look great. Rocket beginning to roll, putting down 5.1 million pounds of thrust. Up, they're going to back off those engines just a bit. So we're getting ready to head into max, max power and telemetry nominal. We hear that power and telemetry on the vehicle are good there. Everything's looking uh, really Falcon well. Falcon Heavy is supersonic. They have uh, reduced power in the center core uh, to get through maximum max Q, maximum dynamic pressure on the launch vehicle as we approach that. The two side boosters at full throttle. A beautiful shot there is our camera team. Well, all looking pretty smooth to my very untrained eye. And Malab Ghosh, our science correspondent who's with me watching those pictures. It's always mesmerising, isn't it, watching any kind of launch. But this is a staggering mission, isn't it, in it terms is. of its complexity? It is. It's so far so good. I think we're waiting for the stage separation, which is a critical moment. Nothing is, say, uh, is completely safe uh, on a journey to space. But at least it's launched. Hopefully it's on its way. And we just have to wait five years to find yeah. out whether we're alone in the universe or not. Yeah, although, will we find that out definitively? No, we I we mean, won't. we'll just find out about the potential conditions. Exactly. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're right to correct that. I was, you know, it's just so exciting. <laughs> you're getting carried away. <laughs> you're getting, getting a little bit carried away. Um, but Europa is, what, 630 million kilometres from Earth. It's, it's an awfully long way away. And I was talking to a, a, um, a scientist earlier who was saying we've we spent a lot of time concentrating on Mars in recent years. Is, is this... Does this amount to a sort of new departure, do you think, in some ways? Well, it does. And um, there's, a, there's a bit of a war going on between planetary science scientists, those that are obsessed with Mars and those that have said, look, we've got all these water worlds in the outer reaches of the solar system, so why are we keeping going back to Mars and doing the same, in their view, similar experiments and doing lots of geology, where there's very little uh, water on Mars. So they seem to be gaining the upper hand with this mission. There's uh, plans for a, another mission to Uranus, which also has water. We have already got a European mission to some of the other moons of Jupiter. So it seems like the, the outer solar system, the moons, may well be more likely to have life now rather than Mars, which maybe once had life. And, and this Jupiter moon has, as you were saying earlier, an awful lot of water. I mean, way more water than we have on Earth. Twice as much, twice as much. Mm. And it seems strange. Why should something so far away that's got ice on its surface have water? Now, the reason is that Jupiter, it's, it's the biggest planet in the solar system and it has powerful gravity and it stretches and squeezes the moon. And so it's that movement that means that it's got a layer of water uh, in between, and its core might provide the heat and nutrients for life to exist. And that is what the Europa Clipper mission mm. is going to try and find out with its 49 orbits in five years' time. Palab, thank you. Back to Dr Adam Baker, space engineer, who is watching that launch with us. Well, uh, as we said, it was uh, seemed to be a pretty smooth uh, launch, Adam. But this is a really, really challenging space mission, isn't it? 
Yeah, that's right. Um, that said, they've probably got the world's most experienced company doing the launch. This is SpaceX. You've done hundreds of Falcon 9 launches. This is, I think, the 11th Falcon 9 heavy launch. And as we saw the other day, they're trialing their new rocket, the Starship, which will be even bigger. So if anyone can pull off the delivery and get Europa Clipper there in one piece, it will certainly be SpaceX. Do you think the odds are on it being successful and coming up with some of those answers that Palab was, was saying that they're really looking for? I think it's pretty likely. If it gets through the early phases of the launch, which are probably the most risky, then actually it's a pretty quiet journey for the next five years and they'll have most of the critical systems switched off. Uh, they'll turn it on from time to time to check it and it'll come past Earth once or twice and they'll get some signals from it then. I think that the next risky phase where things could go wrong is likely to be when it goes into Jupiter orbit. There's a Jupiter entry part where it's got to slow down enough to be captured by the giant planet's gravity, and then it'll go into this slow 49 orbit sort of um, dance, as Palab was talking about. So we'll have to calm ourselves down, find something else interesting to look at in space for the next five years and wait for that. So it's it's probably going to be pretty dull <laughs> from now on. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we'll find something to talk about and think about. Uh, Adam Baker, thank you so much, the space engineer and also our science correspondent, Palab Ghosh, talking us through that spectacular launch of the Europa Clipper heading up to that Jupiter moon Europa.